Hello again, welcome to my lounge, good to have you. I'm uh, continuing the devotional, we're coming right into the home stretch. Paul's about to close this letter to the Philippians and I'm going to be reading from chapter 4 verse 10. It's part of a two-parter uh, because this section is dealing with the financial contribution that the church gave towards Paul. And uh, Trevor's uh, talk tomorrow on his verses that he's going to be sharing on is the second half of this uh, section on this financial contribution. And from verse 10 of chapter 4, it says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. And so the first point we see here very simply is that God's people are generous. God's people are generous. And it's a principle that we see right throughout the scriptures and right throughout Paul's letters. The people of God who benefit from the, hearing the gospel of God would uh, give back to the uh, livelihoods of those who would teach the gospel. And so if you're a believer and you find yourself under a church leadership who are faithfully preaching the word of God. For me, that's number one. You're preaching the gospel, and uh, you can see that they're men of integrity. You can see that there's something exemplary in their lives, that maybe they're not perfect, and maybe they make mistakes, and they get things wrong, but there's really a heart to steward well, a heart to preach the gospel, preach the word of God faithfully, and a heart of love for the congregation then uh, the biblical expectation is that you would give towards their livelihoods, towards their family's well-being, and also towards uh, the work of the gospel in our communities and in, in other countries, in the nations and to our neighbors, yeah, and that you would be able to give towards the work of the gospel in your community. So we see, uh, number one, that God is looking for a people who are generous and who give towards the work of the gospel. And I just want to commend again North Point uh, in this time, uh, it's an uncertain time. We're not sure uh, where things are going and exactly what's going to happen, but we've got great faith and you've demonstrated that faith and that concern for your leaders and for those out there who are less fortunate and you've continued to give in this time and we just want to commend you for that. It's wonderful to see and we encourage you, don't stop. Uh, under God, work out between you and the Father uh, what you are going to be giving towards the work of God um, in, in the earth today. And... Um, there's a flip side to that coin because on the one side of the coin, it's that God's people are generous. But on the other side, it's that God's people are not greedy and God's leaders are not greedy. And that's what uh, Paul says here. He says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need. Uh, Paul, Paul was saying, I'm fine if I lack. Paul was saying, it's fine if I'm not well fed. I'm okay. I'm content. My concern is for your heart, that your heart would be generous because the father's heart is generous. And God's people should follow on from God's example and be a generous people. So Paul wasn't in it for himself and in for his financial gain. And what a great example, friends. And unfortunately, there's too much in the church today of, of um, this type of, of, of manipulating people for finances, people misusing uh, the church as a platform for financial gain. And friends, we can't have that. There's no place for that. It's led to a place where the church has a bad reputation because of these people who carry on this way, uh, using the gospel as a means to finance, to me, as a means to uh, uh, gaining finances. Whereas we should use finances as a means to spreading the gospel. Uh, that is the correct way. And so it's very sad, but uh, but Paul shows us a better way. Where yes, the one side is uh, that God wants a generous people. But God's also looking for leaders and people who are not greedy for dishonest gain. So how could Paul do that? How could he um, be content uh, even in chains? And it was a very real uh, possibility that he, the end of his life was looming near. He might lose his life for this gospel. Yet he was content, con content in the face of trials and hardship. And he says, I've learned the secret to being content, whether I'm, I've got food in the cupboard or whether I don't. You know, whether I'm well-fed or hungry, whether I've got plenty, whether I lack, I've got the secret to contentment. 
And I'm always weary of sermons that say this is the secret to happiness or the secret to success. But here Paul's saying it. So this is interesting to me. Paul's saying I've got the secret to contentment. And I believe it's right there in verse uh, 13. This is a great verse. People have tattooed it on their bodies. They've got it on their coffee mugs. They've got it on shirts. My son's even got a shirt of this verse. Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And I think people have taken this the wrong way. And I was seeing it in all the research I was doing into this and all the study I was doing where um, unanimously all the, 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 the theologians who've studied this uh, um, portion, they've said this doesn't mean that you can, you know, do any crazy exploit uh, somehow because Christ is involved in the picture somewhere. We can't go and scale, um, you know, the Hillbrow Tower, you know, unaided because uh, of Christ who gives me strength. We can't go and, you know, swim across the Atlantic Ocean. That's not what it's talking about here. It's talking about bearing up under trials. It's talking about a life that is ordered by the gospel. It's talking about uh, uh, Paul as an example of a man who uh, put his whole life on the line uh, in order to follow God's ways and in order to spread this gospel. He knew that Christ would empower him for overcoming or facing up or standing up under Whatever trials, whatever situation, whatever circumstances you would face, if that looked like comfort and plenty, or if that looked like um, lack and hunger, he would be able to stand up under those, those trials. And that for me is a, a, a more faithful picture here of what this verse is talking about. So how does Christ empower us to, um, to be content? Uh, if, if looking to Christ is the secret of contentment, uh, if, if, if we need power from God uh, uh, to be content uh, in hardship or in, in comfort, um, how does that work? How does that work? How does Christ empower us? And just two points uh, that I have on that. Uh, how does Christ empower us for contentment? And number one, I think it's, um, it's obviously through his salvation. When God comes and saves us, he puts a new heart in us. And that is a heart of contentment. When you see that first of all, that you were created by a creator, that you're not just some random assemblage of atoms floating through the universe by mistake, but that God created you with purpose to, 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 to reflect his own image. Uh, uh, when we understand that, and then we understand that we were sold into sin, that we, that we rebelled against God, that we were lost and dead in our transgressions and hopeless. And then when we understand the cross, that Jesus came to die on our behalf to take the wrath that we deserve, when you understand, as I've said so often before, that blood ran down that rough wooden cross for you on this Good Friday, which we remember on this, this Friday of this week. When we understand that, or the more we ponder on these great truths of our salvation, the more sold out we'll be to Jesus, the more content we'll be with, with what we have. It removes us from that position where we go the way of the world, which is complaining, it's negativity, and it's death. And that salvation, pondering on these things, understanding these things, puts us on a path where it's life and peace and joy and gratitude we become grateful if we knew that we deserved only the wrath of God and at any moment he could have wiped us out yet he showed us mercy my wife my family my house the the air that I breathe the food that I eat yeah. friends this this is gratitude and this is contentment uh, so that salvation that new heart that God puts in us uh, uh, is is part of that empowerment of looking to Christ he gives us the power to be content and then my last point to close is that he puts his spirit in us. I can't explain it to you, but the spirit of God uh, comes to dwell inside of you and it brings change, man. Go read Ephesians 3 from verse 14 where it talks about his spirit coming in us to empower us uh, uh, with, 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 the, with the spiritual strength in our inner being. Go read Matthew 3 where it talks about the Holy Spirit uh, baptizing you with fire, the fire that he puts in you. Uh, there's a supernatural power that enables you to, to stand up under the most severe hardship and the most severe trials. Go read in John 7 where Jesus says, anybody who believes in me out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. I can't explain it to you, but God will come and he will supernaturally lift you up and encourage you and enable you to stand up under whatever hardship you may face. As long as you diligently are seeking him and putting your trust in him, he will empower you. He's committed to doing that. I can do all of these things. I can face any trial. I can overcome. I can walk on the path that God has for me because not of my own strength. Uh, if, if you're reading Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it, 
it, it makes you feel like you have the strength and the capacity to, you know, lift more weights or whatever it is, then we're not understanding the verse because it's not about our capacity and our understanding and our ability, but it's this power, this God-given power that's quite from the outside of us, doesn't come from inside us. He comes to, to fill us with that and empower us with that. And that is what will help us under severe trials. So I pray that over all of you. May you experience, as, as I've experienced and as so many uh, 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 have experienced, that, that supernatural power that God comes to, to enable us with. He gives us his word. He gives us his spirit. He gives us salvation and enables us to withstand under every trial uh, that we might face as we uh, seek to, to serve him and to go about his will. God bless you. Uh, uh, and all the best in your situation uh, right throughout this uh, period of the lockdown and beyond.